Why? Why? All I ask is why. Why do you need for this to happen? What is the reason for you to make Superman bisexual? That's just what that, that that's the, the key thing there. Because when I first saw the news, because people were sending me to me, uh, my, my sister sent it to, to me, friends sent it to me, I saw it on Twitter and everything. And I've just been trying to be like, okay. But I was like, you know what? It's, 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 let me just give my thoughts on it. Because when I first saw the news, first thing I tweeted out, why? Not, oh, no, this is wrong. This is terrible. We do this. This is terrible. Simple thing was, why? So before I wanted to do this video, I had to figure out the answer to that question of why are you doing this? What is the reason for you to do this? Because with everything in life, there is a reason. There's always a prime mover, cause and effect. So that brings us to this article here via the BBC. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Um, so I think his name is... Hold up, hold up. Um, so yeah. So series writer Tom Taylor. So... Um, series writer Tom Taylor told the BBC when he was first offered the job, he pondered what Superman should be today. What Superman should be. See, already here, we have a slight mistake here because, you see, these characters are archetypes. They're not the UN. They're not like parts of a, a social movement. They are archetypes. They are fictional characters. But most of the fictional characters, they're archetypes, which means that they are incorruptible in certain ways. And what you do is just reset them. It's like Shakespeare or this place where these characters have specific characteristics. Now you can you can you can sort of tweak things, veer things off, but there is a there is a certain nucleus, there is a there is a certain consistency that that you must have that is what makes makes these characters what they are so already those are already um red signals of like okay okay what he should be today right okay so let's move so remember we're trying to figure out the why it struck me that it would be a real missed opportunity if we replace clark kent with another straight white savior so the two things here Real missed opportunity. Um, why do comic book characters have to have a responsibility to, to, to fight for social change? Same thing with Star Wars. Why should Star Wars have to have a responsibility to promote and fight against sexism? Or why should freaking, I don't know, any of these characters where they're trying to, or James Bond. Why should James Bond now be a, a property to try to fight racism? Why? So when, so when you say a missed opportunity, does Superman, that's, see now that's the key thing because an opportunity relates to something that will help you improve. Ah, this is an opportunity to earn more money. This is an opportunity to, to become more successful. This is an opportunity to move up in rankings in your job or so forth. So an opportunity means this is needed for you to improve, to become better. Does Superman need anything to improve? It's Superman. Hence why Lord only knows how they've managed to mess up Superman in the movies because this is the most iconic, one of the most iconic characters on the planet. It's just, he has one of the most iconic symbols on the planet. It's Superman. It is the superhero. It is the leader. It is the face of superheroes because Batman, he's a bit edgy on, on the edge and so forth. Spider-Man, my, my favorite, favorite character, he's much more of a comedian and everything. But in fact, of the archetypal superhero, it's Superman. Superman doesn't need any kind of opportunities to sort of be like, oh no, if Superman was black... Or if Superman was a, was a female, if Superman was... No, because it's Superman. And the other thing is, 
and this is the real one, another straight white savior. Guys, I wanna I wanna keep things real here because I think people need people need to be real. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Straight white men gave us Superman, Batman, Spider Man. One of my favorite characters was made by a straight white man. Another of my favorite characters, so, so yes, Spider Man. One of my favorite characters, Spawn, was made by a straight white man. <laughs> so, but specifically for Spider Man, that was made by a straight white man. I really thought actually, if you look through, it was probably actually Steve Ditko more than more so than Stanley. But who cares? It was made by straight white men, Spider Man. And the way that art works is, you want to create characters in your own image. See, Todd McFarlane just out of his own criticism was like, "Oh, watch when let me create a black character because I want this is where I want to go artist, art, artistically." Now he wasn't creating a black character for. Diversity political. Remember, this was back in the, this was in ninety two. <laughs> so back in ninety two, there wasn't this stuff of like, oh, let's make it black so we can try, try and be cool. No, he. So that was really an artistic choice that Todd McFarlane just said that just for my own artistic creative vision, I want to make um, Al Simmons black. But with regards to Spider Man and everything, more for most guys, you make a character in your image. Like if I'm making a character or stories that I've, I've written. Most likely the character will, will be black. Now, sometimes I'll say, Oh, actually, I want to make a different spin on a samurai warrior. I want to make a different spin on like a medieval warrior. But more times than not, I'd want to make a character that is black, most likely West African, or most likely Nigerian, because that's something I connect with. So for straight white artists, straight white male artists, they'll make things that are straight white men because that's what they are. And that is what they connect with, and that is what um they can write for you. My brother once told me, he said, like, write what you know. Write what you you know. A straight white man knows what goes through a straight white man's mind and his impulses and what it feels. So for Ditsko and Stanley, they knew what it means to be Peter Parker when he was young and so forth. They know what it means to be a Bruce Wayne in certain scenarios. They know what it means to be a freaking Clark Kent because they are straight white men. So you making this comment of, oh, another straight white savior. Like, what's that supposed to mean? So straight white men now should now feel a duty. They now have a duty to try and make characters bisexual, transsexual, black, Chinese, woman, and so forth. That's bogus. That's stupid. That's not how art works. Okay? If you want to make a character black, Mr. Black creator, make it black. If you want to make a character a woman, Miss Female creator, make it a woman. If you want to make a character gay, Mr. Um, gay um, creator, make it gay. That's how it should work because the best art comes from within and comes from experience. So for me, like, okay, yeah, I'd, yeah, I would like to make a, a samurai character, but it wouldn't be as authentic as me making... A black Nigerian character. It, 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 it won't be. Because that's character that is black, that is Nigerian, or that's African. I know that. I know I can enter into their brain and I can write from true experience because it's truly authentic. So you're chastising straight white creators for making art based off of their experience. So said, there's been a real shift over the last few years. Ten, ten years ago, five years ago, this would have been more difficult. But I think things have shifted in a really welcome way. Um, so we have people saying they read this news today and burst into tears. People saying they never thought in their life that they would be able to see themselves in Superman, literally the most powerful superhero in comics. You'll always have people who use the old line of don't put politics into comics, forgetting that every single comic book story ever has been political in some way. People who don't realize that the uh, comic series X-Men was an analogy for the civil rights movement. We try to bring those people with us, but we're writing for the people who will hopefully see this Superman and say, this Superman is like me. This Superman is fighting for things that concern me. And therein lies the issue there. That's thing, because he was trying to be tricky because he's trying to bring in X-Men. 
You know, it's only after the fact. As a kid, I didn't know Magneto was uh, Malcolm X and Pro Professor X was Martin Luther, Luther, Luther King. I didn't know. It's only as I grew older that, aha, because it was more analogical. Anal so it was like, okay, because here's the thing. Even when you watch it again, you can view it that, that way. But Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, it was a little bit much, much more complex. And Martin Luther King, in his later years, actually his views were more aligned with what Malcolm X was saying. So it wasn't as direct and blatant as, oh, this is Malcolm X, this is Martin Luther King. No. So they were not saying that, oh, we are going to fully put this. Obviously, they used that as inspiration, but Magneto is still Magneto, Professor X, Professor X, and they're not complete, direct replications of what Martin Luther King or Malcolm X was. So that analogy doesn't really work for me. But when you view this, you can't arts and agendas they it's 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 difficult because yes you there is arts that can be political and i think when you when you look at propaganda pieces or people fighting against governments and so forth they they can they, you, you view through art you can see it through music and so forth where people can make music to make a political statement or anything but the thing though is music is one thing these are comic book characters comic book characters and the see the key thing here is what's your end goal your end goal is you want to fight against homophobia of course that's what your end goal is and then my question is how will this help to fight against homophobia and the real answer is it's going to do a lot there are other things that can be be done, and it's it's tricky. Same thing. I'll I'll I'll, I'll flip it. I don't I don't want to see a black Superman. That's why I hate Miles Morales. I perfect example is Spider Man because that is that was always my favorite combo character growing growing up. You making Spider Man half black and half Latino for me that's that's trash. That does nothing to solve racism. And a racist who obviously you would not make less racist, a racist view now would be like, wait, what then is this? So, so my thing is that wh what effect does this have? D doing this, will it make that dude less homophobic? No, it won't. All this does is be like, ah, a guy, that person that was a fan of Superman, oh, I can finally see myself, but this is the issue. The homosexual person. Or the sorry, the bisexual person who was already a fan of Superman before. They were already a fan of Superman. They went asking you to make Superman bisexual. I'll use myself as an example. Spider-Man from when I was my gosh, five or six years old. That was that was always the comic that, that I read. And I love the character because because even if Peter Parker was white, I sort of saw myself in, in Peter Parker because I like to crack jokes. I was a bit of an outsider and so forth and, and, and everything. I was a little bit quirky. And I saw so much saw myself in Peter Parker, so I could really relate to him. And I loved the costume. Same thing with freaking Batman. My One of my favorite films of all time, Tim Burton's Batman. Because of how much of an introvert that Bruce Wayne was, I completely connected with Bruce Wayne. Yes, he's a white and much older, but I, com I connected with his, 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 his character. And then we now see Spawn, the beat about Spawn is from the inception, he's black. So whether that kid Spawn was white and he was from black, but from the inception, from the beginning, Ultimate is black. So it's like, oh wow, Jesus, it's, it's, it's a black character. Cool. Even a, a closer connection with him now. So I am sure that there were bisexual fans of Superman who connected with Superman. He doesn't have to be, be, be he doesn't have to be bisexual for me to connect with, with him. So you doing this. What effect does this truly have to fight homophobia? You making Batman black or Spider-Man black, what effect does that truly have to fight against racism? Not much of an effect. So it goes back to my original question. Why? Why? Because this seems to be a slippery slope. 
because what this is is I want to I want to do something good because for this creator he's like hey I did something great I did something amazing and I was part of the fight against homophobia and and so forth and I used this property to really do something great oh for, forget all those trolls and everything this was something great and people who burst into tears and were super happy they said oh, I can finally see myself yes I've done something great screw the, the other guys. <sighs> Comic books will have no effect on solving homophobia or racism or sexism. It will not. I'm, I'm sorry to break it it, it. it will not. <laughs> to do that kind of stuff, you've got to do much harder work in terms of... You see, because what you do, what you do... Because I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was talking to my boy about this. What you do is you... A he creates a character from the inception. He's bisexual, and he's cool. He's got a, he's got a great costume. He's got superpowers. He's got a very interesting character. Because once you do that, people will, will now respect that. Oh, okay, okay. Wow, well, he's bisexual, but this character's cool. This character has great powers. He's got an interesting character as, as, as well. He doesn't beat us down with with him being bisexual, but he's just a cool character that just happens to be bi bi, bi bisexual. Then once that happens. Guys will, be, will want it because you've not come at it in a very sick, derivative kind of way. It's pure. It's artistically pure. Because you're saying, because what this is, is what is famous? What's popular? Let's take that and just slap on black, slap on Chinese, slap on female, slap on bisexual, slap on gay. Rather, no, no. From the inception, this is something completely new. Because this is what I've always said. Superman, we know Superman is big. Okay, we Superman meets a new character that, that's bi, bisexual. So you still have the Superman image, but he meets a character that is bisexual. But his character is cool. He's got great parts, and the way he's inserted into the Superman story is very cool. So by that, people now say, oh, wow, so this character is damn cool, man. But he's bisexual. So this whole bisexual thing and everything. So the, oh, the guys are bisexual and everything. That will do more than this. So there are ways to do it. Not like this. <laughs> Not like this. Because what you're doing is, my friend, you're just, you want to try and score points. Because that was the thing that had the biggest issues. And this is what I always say. The straight white savior. The straight white savior. I'm sorry. The reason why I have the stuff that I love is from straight white people. Now, obviously, the Wachowskis obviously transitioned and so forth. But... They were guys. Okay, okay, look. They were guys. Look, when they made the Matrix, they were guys. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. When they made the Matrix, they were guys. So the people that gave me the Matrix, one of the things that affected my life so greatly were two straight white men at the time. Spider Man, one of my favorite characters of all time. Two straight white men. That's what it is. <laughs> so now, and after my. Now chastise them for like, oh, you straight white man, another straight white savior. <laughs> okay, I'm a straight white man, so I now have to now make some someone black. Or years down the line, my character that I created in a very sense way now has been down to turn black or bisexual because it's a crime that I am making something, a character that I have a shared experience with to so therefore make it more authentic. Look what we're doing here. <laughs> What 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 are we what I mean what are we doing here? What are we doing here, man? <laughs> Guys, you know, um, The world is crazy. The, 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 the world is crazy. And I think the world is getting crazier and crazier and crazier, man. Um, and as I said again, look, I know people. It's for me that are okay. I know people that are okay and so forth. You know, so. And 
homophobia is a real issue. <laughs> it's a real issue. <laughs> and I always find it weird how people just have such a big issue, really big issue with people who are gay or bisexual. I'm like, okay, if, if they're not harming you or they're not shoving it in your face, what, what, what's, what's the issue? This avenue of you not trying to fight homophobia is not. 